Okay, this could very easily be the last clip in this chapter. Uh, so I guess that gives me the right to go on a little bit of a rampage or a rant right now. Uh, because now we're getting into the part on nutrition and disease. And of course, we'll be dealing with a lot of these uh, issues in various parts of systemic pathology and in other areas, for example, pediatrics. So really, the only uh, factor that we'll really concentrate on with this next and last huge, huge, huge topic are basically uh, vitamin deficiencies, and particularly vitamin uh, D and vitamin uh, K. Uh, because the other vitamins we'll be dealing with in other areas. Um, okay, here's my rant. Uh, as we know, food is part of our environment, so this uh, topic belongs in the environment chapter. We are concerned with additives. Uh, we know that there are things in our environment, in our foods, that we come in contact with that are very, very good for us. Uh, and there are things that we eat and ingest in our foods which are very very bad for us so let's take both sides of this uh, equation here we're concerned with things that are very 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 good for us but maybe we don't really quite know what they are uh, and maybe we're really 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 concerned with contaminants or preservatives or things that are very 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 bad for us but we don't know what they are either well my point is my rant is is that we probably will never ever really know and it's not because of lack of scientific uh, knowledge it's because of commercialism it's because every time you hear that something is good for you and we should have a whole bunch of it, it for the most part that's just commercial hype on the other hand every time you hear something is very very bad for you you might not hear that it's bad for you because of commercial hype i worked with the development of a couple of major drugs of which one was an aids uh, preventing substance and uh, i can tell you folks the the perception even at the scientific level of the good or the bad things in our nutrition are 100 percent dependent on the mo the commercial money or the lack of money uh, behind them and that's a very very sad thing i don't know how this will ever be fixed but if you think the fda is here to protect you by uh, maintaining scientific studies forget it they are here to uh, a accept money you know like many other government agencies uh, we're not going to get into the topic of obesity either. Uh, that's like a whole new thing. And when you practice, you're going to have your own little uh, set theories about what causes obesity, what cures obesity. And there's really not much I could say right here that's going to ultimately affect your thinking on it. Uh, and everybody will have a different uh, theory. Uh, as we know, things in our diet cause diseases things in our diet prevent diseases including cancer as well and once again what these things these substances really are uh, because of commercialism I know this sounds very 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 negative but we will never know so end of rant let's get into a little bit of real pathology here uh, let's talk about vitamins that's a good thing with nutrition basically we have two kinds of vitamins we have fat soluble vitamins specifically a d e k they're all fat soluble and we have the water soluble vitamins which are c b and just everything besides a d e and k the general principle is because a d e and k are fat soluble they are readily stored in fat and therefore they hang around the body longer in general uh, so therefore, it's, you're less likely to have a dietary deficiency of a fat-soluble vitamin than a water-soluble vitamin, which gets excreted pretty fast, and you're more likely to have a deficiency of. However, there are certain non-fat-soluble vitamins, like uh, vitamin B12, for example. It's a B vitamin. It's water-soluble that hangs around for a long time. And, uh, of course, A 
is also a vitamin that you really could uh, abstain from for a long time before you start to see any type of deficiencies. And uh, quite frankly, uh, in this country, you'll probably never see a vitamin A deficiency. And we'll talk about the vitamin B12 extensively in the hematology chapter. Um, the two vitamins, uh, B-related vitamins, that uh, can become depleted very quickly. And if you abstain from them within weeks, you could see some deficiencies are uh, folic acid, or generally folate, as well as one of the B vitamins, thiamine. So the general principle from here is that fat sticks around. You're less likely to uh, have a deficiency with a fat-soluble vitamin, and the water uh, soluble gets excreted more quickly. You're more likely to have deficiencies there. Let's talk about vitamin D. We'll concentrate mostly on vitamin D and vitamin K for this um, chapter. Uh, if you kind of remember the general uh, metabolism of vitamin D, there's a lot of chemistry here. I like to think of it in terms of uh, a quick little diagram like this, you know. You get vitamin D in your diet. It gets absorbed in your small intestine. It goes uh, into your body. There are certain ultraviolet reactions in your skin that change it somewhat dif uh, a little bit. Then it goes to your liver, and it gets hydroxylized at the 25 position. Then it goes to your kidney, and it gets another dihydroxy vitamin D at the 1 and 25 steroid position. This is the active form. It then acts basically by increasing calcium and phosphate absorption in your gut, and the calcium, uh, it also works directly on bone by a delicate balance with parathyroid hormone. As you remember, parathyroid hormone activates osteoclast to take calcium out of the bone. And you could think of uh, vitamin uh, D as being at the other end of this uh, spectrum is basically maintaining a mineral into the bone. So basically, that's what we said here, only in diagrammatic form. And let's talk about uh, a few other things with vitamin D. As we said, stimulates intestinal absorption of calcium. That's one way it brings in calcium. Another way it brings in calcium is to put it in the bones with a very delicate uh, 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 balance with parathyroid hormone. And specifically, on a more realistic level, Vitamin D stimulates parathyroid hormone-dependent reabsorption of calcium in the, in the distal renal tubules. And as you know, there are all the different forms of vitamin D. The most active one by far is the dihydroxy one, which is basically the one that uh, comes out of the kidneys uh, after the liver does its job on it. Here's another nice little diagram here of what would happen in a vitamin D deficiency. I hope this is logical. Well, in a vitamin D deficiency, you don't have enough vitamin D. So therefore, it's, there's not enough absorbed from the gut. And therefore, you'll actually have a lower serum calcium and phosphate level. And as a result, the parathyroid hormone, which it forms a nice little counterbalance with, will do more of a job in its uh, equilibrium to take calcium out of the bone and the parathyroid and the vitamin D cannot counterbalance that so you'll lose it from your bone as well and that's why women with uh, osteoporosis many of them they just have uh, not enough of a level of vitamin D even in the uh, presence of no actual deficiency so that's what this little thing means and uh, we've already talked about this so let's talk about where you're not likely to see the real, you know, uh, rickets and osteomalacia too often in your practice, but you will see a lot of osteoporosis. A recent uh, study showed that um, uh, vitamin D is uh, really pretty good in the treatment or prevention of osteoporosis. And look at this figure. Over half of 1,500 women had inadequate uh, vitamin D levels. And uh, so that's why uh, when you think of uh, vitamin D, don't just think in terms of the classical diseases of, you know, rickets in kids and osteomalacia in adults. You know, think of something that uh, maybe a third of everybody that walks into your office is going to have also osteoporosis. 
here the classical uh, findings are rickets in kids and osteomalacia in adults. We'll talk about that a little bit more in the last clip. Thank you very much.